Hey guys, I'm Double D. In this video, I'll be talking about memory leaks. To be specific, I'll talk about what they are, what are the consequences of memory leaks, I'll show some examples, and also how to detect them. Let's start off by saying what they are. A memory leak is a problem in programming that occurs when a program incorrectly manages memory allocation. This happens when the program allocates some memory and then never releases it. So whenever you declare a variable, the program allocates a certain amount of memory needed to store it. How much memory is allocated depends on the variable type. For example, in C++, whenever you declare a character, the program allocates one byte of memory. For integers, it allocates four bytes. For doubles, it allocates eight bytes, and so on. And when it comes to variables of user-made classes, like chicken, the general idea is to take the sum of the sizes of all the non-static members of the class and allocate that much memory. So if the class chicken had two members, for example two integers, the program would allocate 8 bytes, 4 for each integer. But this is just a trivial example and it's important to remember that it gets more complicated when you take in different factors like class inheritance, the existence of virtual functions, order of class members, and more. When I tried testing this out, I found out that having multiple variables of different types causes the program to allocate more memory than you would expect. For example, if chicken has an integer and a double, the expected memory size for this class would be 12 bytes, 4 for the integer and 8 for the double. However, the program allocates 16 bytes. I'm not sure why this happens, but one thing is for sure, and that is that the size of the class will never be less than the sum of the sizes of all the class members. Another important thing to remember is this. When you're declaring a variable in C++, you can choose to have a static or a dynamic memory allocation. Here's an example for static allocation, and here's one for dynamic allocation. What's the difference between the two? Well, the first one is statically allocated on the stack of the program, and it will die at the end of the block code in which it is defined. This means that the memory allocated for this variable will automatically be released at the end of the code block. And the second one is dynamically allocated on the heap of the program, and it will stay alive until you, the programmer, delete it yourself and release the allocated memory. Of course, when we're talking about memory leaks, we'll be using dynamically allocated variables because that's when we have control over when we deallocate the memory, and unfortunately, that's when mistakes like memory leaks happen. Okay, now that we understand memory allocation and what memory leaks are, let's see some consequences that they have. An interesting thing about memory leaks is that you won't get a warning or an error saying that you have a problem in your program. This proves that even if something works, it doesn't mean that it works correctly or that it's good. Memory leaks are problems that will show themselves over time, making them the cause of a concept called software aging. Software aging refers to a program's tendency to fail after running continuously for a certain amount of time. What happens then is the program runs out of available memory, causing the other programs to be very slow and maybe even the whole system to not work correctly. Having something like this happen in software for embedded devices, which may be left running for years, can be a big problem. Today, memory leaks are for the most part handled by the operating system, and programs with memory leaks that run for a short amount of time won't cause any harm but I think it's still important to be aware of them and avoid creating them. Another thing that prevents us from creating memory leaks are the programming languages themselves. If you noticed, the examples I showed in this video were all in C++, because that's one of the languages that gives you control over memory allocation, and more importantly, memory deallocation. Another language that works like this is C. But when we're talking about modern languages like Java or c -sharp, the programmer doesn't have to worry about memory management because of a concept called garbage collection. 
Garbage collection is a form of automatic memory management. Simply put, a garbage collector reclaims memory occupied by objects that are no longer in use by the program. When this happens and how is a topic for another video. There are many strategies, but what's important is that this mechanism frees the programmer from manually dealing with memory deallocation. This means that the same piece of code written in C++, which can cause a memory leak, would be completely fine in C Sharp and any other garbage collected language, because it would be automatically handled in the background. Garbage collection sounds amazing and its advantages are obvious. I think that anyone who gets used to garbage collection has a very hard time getting back to manual memory management. But garbage collection also has one downside, and that is performance. Using a mechanism like this for every block of code in your program can largely affect its overall performance. This is why languages like C++ are used for time-sensitive programs. Anyway, let's finally see some examples of memory leaks. Here's how the code would look normally without the memory leak. First, we allocate memory for 5 integers by declaring this number array. Then we would realistically use the array somehow between these two lines. And when we're done, we would delete the pointer called number array, which would release the memory. Running the program will do nothing but print out that it has ended. Now if I comment out this line, the program will have a memory leak. Interesting thing is that the program gives the same result both times, and there's no error, just as I explained earlier. The second example is basically the same thing, except that the variable declaration is now inside a function called make a string, which is called from the main function. This is even worse from the first example, because even if you wanted to release the memory once you call the function in main, you wouldn't be able to because you don't have a reference to the variable anymore. Once the function is finished, the memory will stay occupied forever. Running the program gives us the same result as last time. For the last example, I put the function call inside an infinite loop. This would allocate new memory each time and would never release it. Eventually, the program will run out of available memory and the operating system would terminate it. We can track the amount of memory our program uses through Visual Studio or using the Task Manager. In this example, we could clearly see that something is not right because the program was terminated. But in the previous two examples, it wasn't very clear because there was no indicator. And sometimes when there's hundreds of lines of code, it's hard to keep track of which variable was deleted and which wasn't. That's why I wanted to show you how to detect memory leaks in C++. You can do this by using a built-in function called CRT dump memory leaks. This function returns 0 if there's no memory leaks found or a number larger than 0 if there were leaks. So if you suspect you have memory leaks in your code, call this function at the end of the code block to check. We can test this with the first example I showed. As you can see, when I run it at first, there's no message. And then when I comment out this line, there's a message telling us that there's a memory leak. That's pretty much all I wanted to show today. If you have any thoughts or questions about this topic, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.